Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of ENA. We got time here with a very special guest, Mr. John Bowman, current TFL player. Say what's up to the people, man. Hey, man, what's up? How you doing? All right, all right. Um, Start off, at what age did you start to take football serious and see it as something you could make a career out of? Crazy story. Like, I didn't play football growing up. I grew up in Brooklyn, uh, New York, back in the time when it wasn't uh, really football in the inner city. I didn't start playing football until I was, like, 15 when I moved to North Carolina. I didn't really take it seriously until, like, after college. Because, like, when I was in high school, I just played football to get a, a college scholarship. When I was in college, I played football to graduate. And then once I realized I was okay, I was pretty good, and I, I can possibly play at a higher level, that's when I took it seriously. That's when I, I decided, hey, man, let me try to go make a name for myself playing football. Okay. Um, a college you chose, Wingate. Explain to me what uh, led you to the decision of going to that school. <laughs> I mean, the, like the best answer, like I only played one year – one year of uh, true eligible football. Like, um, I played my, my freshman year in high school, mm-hmm. and I didn't really play much. Then I went back out my senior year, and that's when they said, hey, you're good enough. And, excuse me. I got a scholarship to go to. I got a bunch of D2 offers, Division mm-hmm. two offers, and this this one was actually closest to the house. <laughs> so I was okay. like, I can still go to college and – and, and come home and get some home cooking and, and do my laundry and stuff. So that was pretty much the decision. Okay. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. Fast mm-hmm. forward um, past college. Going undrafted, what kept you motivated to keep on going? And how big was the adjustment from the college level to the indoor league? Um, My, my boy, his name is Erie Williams He's in South Carolina, like, when I I thought I got done playing, I was actually all American, like one of probably one of the first in my school history, and nice. uh, like I, but I was I was small, like I was two fifteen or something like that. I played a couple All Star games, but like I didn't really think I was gonna play professional at the time. And then my buddy, he had played in the indoor league in uh, Iowa, and he was like, "Hey man, you can definitely come up here or come." Come join my team and, and, and win some games. I've seen a lot of rappers that they come and go like Rodo when they sip on the ring. And then I take a step back and I see you looking like a photo. Bro, see that me and you go where is it state? Then I see the same thing from the same people. Every single time I never do see your eyes, but you see a different result. Now that's the definition of insanity. If you're mad at me, you should bring the rich energy and the originality. Uh, what were you looking like a star from Polar Bear? Let's go and live in the ocean. Now that I island the ice, no seals to eat, no land in sight. Cause the time of the industry gets changing overnight. Let the day after tomorrow, I'm a change in the hall. Hop with all these other rappers survive. And now I'm saying you could die if you say work. Come and join me and stampede out when it outlasts me. You give it all in the world, die. You die. Run it pretty, got you. Stay alive. The weak are praying, only strong survives. Tell me how you feel about your life. Yeah, come around with that weak boy. You're gonna get weak boy. You're not gonna keep around with him, cause I only come around with the heat boy. Tell me gonna destroy anything and then divide with them. Can't do anything and have a change of thing. And I can limit system that created every kind of thing. I'm gonna be eliminated cause I'm penetrating every market that you're in and really I'm a demonstrator. Come on, 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 because, you know, everything I know is the U.S. Everything I knew was New York or North Carolina. And I knew I was going to have to go somewhere all alone, you know, to a separate country. Even though it's only a couple hours away, you're still going to a foreign country. And the town I'm in, in Montreal, is 70% French. So, okay. And I got nobody to lean on, nobody to call. Like, when I'm having a bad day, I can't go see my brother or whatever. So that part was the mental aspect was tough. You know, um, that was probably my first first year or two. That was one of the toughest hurdles I had to get over is knowing that I'm not by myself. I'm just far from everybody that was my, my, my support corner. So, I mean, you know, phone call away and, 
You know, I, mentally I, I got over things, and that was that. As far as the physical aspect, aspect it's way different. You know, it's the field is bigger than the NFL field, uh, mm-hmm. extra man on the field, yard off. And, but it had the same rules as the indoor league as far as, like, the offensive set. Receivers can start early, come out of high motion, uh, very high-scoring games. Um, so it, it was actually fun when I got up here. So, like, I kind of knew what was going on as far as that kind of stuff. But def- definitely a difficult adjustment because just imagine doubling the field, uh, double and plus another 50%. So I went from – uh, the the uh, it is the college field to the indoor league field, and then I came up to this huge 120 yard field with uh, 20 yard end zones and 65 yard sideline to sideline. So it's, it's definitely crazy, but it's it's good. Like, it's fun still. So and it's football okay. at the end of the day. You hit. You yeah, it. definitely. Um, so you said you know leaving. You know the biggest thing was kind of being out there by yourself. I'm going to assume uh, you spent a lot of time um, preparing uh, and and working out and getting your game right because in the first few years, they had consecutive double-digit sack seasons, which isn't an easy task. So uh, could could you maybe get a little bit into how maybe if your preparation changed, did you work hard, like what all went into that? Because that's, that's really not an easy task to accomplish, especially, like you said, with the field being wider. That gives uh, the receivers, the quarterbacks, it gives everybody uh, more room to try and run around you, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely, you know, when I first got here, it's basically like anything, you're getting your feet wet, you're getting used to things, you know, um, uh, getting accustomed to the blocking schemes and the offensive, the offensive team started to run. But, you know, but I think by, by like my third or fourth year, I had found my own. Like, I, I, I was studying more film. Um, I, I can't say that I was eating better, but I was working out more. Uh, I was <laughs> okay. working out more. And the, just the aspects of working out changed. You know, when I first came up, because I'm an old man now, when I first <laughs> came up, it was about, about, about muscles and being jacked and lift benching 600 pounds and squatting 1,000 pounds. You know, but by that time, it was more about flexibility. I started taking yoga. I was uh, doing more um, muscle stamina and trying to muscle endurance rather than just getting strong and, and, and looking good on the beach. So, <laughs> so that, 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 yeah, that, so that aspect changed. Uh, and, and, like, I, I just became better. Like, I physically matured. I mentally matured. And I, I adjusted quickly, quicker than a lot of people because I like I've been here for a place for 14 years, and during the years I've seen a bunch of different people who were played big time ball that can adjust, and it's all about mental adjustment and physical adjustment. I just adjusted, you know, to the game a little bit. Definitely, definitely. Um, now this next question is is, is kind of funny. I mean, you can answer it or not answer it, but I, I personally <laughs> put this one in there just just for myself. Being as though you've had a lot of a lot of years, you know, with double digit sacks, was there any point in time in your career or um during a season where, you know, you were getting ready getting ready to play and you were like, I'm I'm just about to rake this offense, like this offensive line is not good. You know, the quarterback's not mm-hmm. mobile. I might, I might come out here and get four or five sacks. You know, if I really show out. Was there any, was there any <laughs> season or, or or particular game or team you played where you just went there with that mindset like this is gonna be all me today? No, for sure. Um, like when I was, uh, I'll just tell you like three specific instances. So like when I first started getting my run of double digit sacks. I think we used to play uh Toronto. We used to play Toronto a lot. And I, actually their quarterback played in the field. His name was Cleo Lemon. And uh I just knew like he wasn't very athletic. He was just a smart, good quarterback. And we knew that when he came from the Dolphins. So every time we played him the coaches was like, Hey, just don't worry about contain. <laughs> just go eat. <laughs> and their offensive yeah. line was it wasn't wasn't the best. And like he like, listen, if if you mess up the linebacker, go have your day. 
I'm going to have your back and just go eat, just put run numbers up. And so that was like in 2009, 2009 or something like that. And then okay. the year I had like uh, like 2015, I think I had like 19, 20 sacks. And uh, it's everybody. Like, <laughs> it didn't even, it didn't, it didn't every, even matter at that point. Just, just, every, just put them on the field. <laughs> exactly. So it's actually a crazy story. I had got benched for two games too, and I still ended up leading the league. Uh, it was just like because it was like no matter what what happened, it was it, it was my number. Like yeah, it was, was with your me. time. <laughs> you you, you my, can my, my, I can run over. Exactly. I used to run people over. Spin move was working. Swim was working. My end out end was working, and and that was good. And probably um, probably like the last couple of years we played this team called the uh, BC Lions. And like I've had success against them in the past. I don't know if people just like just don't think I'm good when I play against them. <laughs> they, uh, whatever, <laughs> they just let me live, and I just go. I take advantage of the opportunity. Okay, okay. Um, now I, I always, uh, I always wanted to ask people, and you know, having you on your first person I, I've been able to interview. I want to say thank you again. Uh, you won two great cups. I've always wanted to ask you for this when I get the chance. Which one meant more to you? That's a great question. Um, I mean, the, the second one, definitely. The first one was great, was special, but we knew, like, we already knew because the year before we were we were beating teams, we'd lost, but everybody picked us to go 4 and 14 or whatever. We ended up going, like, 11 and 7. And then the next year we were fifteen and or sixteen and two or fifteen and three, so like every game was laughable. Uh, but the second one, like we started off wrong, like we didn't start off good. They wrote us off like they were like, "Yeah, this team was just a one-hit wonder. They could never do it again." And like it just so happened, like at the end of the season, we just started clicking. Uh, like our receivers, like I want to say one of them had like two thousand receiving yards. He, he started going bananas. Man. Um, I don't know. It was, it was just like they. He was just a special guy. Like he was nasty. He was just like one of the best receivers I've ever seen. And, and yeah, so the second one that we just got hot at the right time, and like the great cup actually was easier that year winning than it was, um, than it was the year before because like we we believed in each other, we had each other's backs. Um, but yeah, the, definitely the second one. Because I mean, when you do something, this is like saying I don't know who said it. I just kind of adopted it as, as my own. But when you do something that nobody expects you to do in life, not just football, but in life, <laughs> it, it just feels sweeter. It's it just oh, way yeah, better than doing something when people when people expect you to win. It's fine, whatever you win, whatever. But when nobody expects you to be anything or do anything, man, it's, it's no better feeling. I've, I've I've always heard and I've always I've always tried to tell people the the biggest reason for people's disappointment isn't failure, it's expectations. Exactly. You, you go in there, you exactly. expect it. You go in there expecting a lot, and you come up with you no know, mediocre. It's it, it's a mm-hmm. disappointment, even though it's not that bad. It's it's like man, I was really hoping hoping for this, but um. Yeah, I mean. I mean, yeah. and goals, life and goals, everything is about setting your expectations the right way and setting steps to achieve them. If everything went as smoothly as everybody ever planned. Everybody like, be a millionaire. Billionaire. Everybody be a millionaire. Hitler would have took over Germany. Like, everything. Like, it's, yeah. it's always going to be success. It's always going to be phases. It's how you rebound, how you bounce back. That's, that's, that's a fact. That is definitely a fact. Um. Okay, so um, the next question, I, I kind of like always asking this question because, you know, a lot of people have a lot of stuff going on, no matter how successful you are at at football, you know, there's always, there's always going to come a time where, you know, you're going to eventually have to hang it up. So what are some business endeavors you're pursuing maybe now already have in place or – you know, you have something planned for whenever you finally hang the cleats up and stop hurting these quarterbacks. 
I mean, you definitely take advantage of uh, opportunities that are presented to you. Like, I've been blessed to have a, a good, long, you know, 15-year CFL career at, and, uh, and made some great connections along the way. So a couple of guys, you know, a couple of opportunities have passed my way and I've like, given them thought. And, you know, I can't say I put them on the back burner, but, you know, like I... I go over them, I talk to guys that they're interested, but they know my focus is on football uh, 80% of the time. Yeah, and, and, but the, the thing is, you just try field, to keep working John and open Bowman relationships. Is to be so definitely. When you are finished, when you are finished, you have something to jump into immediately. And I'm just looking forward to being in a position where I can do that. Definitely. Maybe you know you go be a. Uh, it's hard to believe that before he signed with the Alouettes like that, in 2006, you know, the, the CFL guys, uh, seemed a world away. I mean, for sure. I mean, and that's, do you remember again, what your that's, first that's impression that was when you got to the field? Turned down, like if that's experience? where my life leads me down that path, you know, then I, then I'll take it. Called me, you know, like, you want you to come play in Canada. Okay, uh, like, man, here's the biggest question I like to ask people, and I always get a different answer. I got on the plane. I had a winter coat. Uh, what are some boots, things? Jeans, uh, and football. You uh, think you for uh, the rest of your life. And me? what are some words of encouragement? If Bowman you have thought arriving in Montreal was difficult, like said, simply know, getting really to play that football that was a journey uh, in itself. At first, but, Although you know, he's a star now, it's the story behind you know, the stats that truly makes Bowman stand out. Despite not looking at the numbers, you must know that you hold the, so the, uh, the franchise so, record you know, for sacks for, uh, for the Montreal Alouettes. What's that like to, to have that to title? D1 I mean, you know, uh, first round at first or whatever the case I was just, I was like, what happened last year? I was blown away because my steps to get here were rough. You know, nobody gave me a fair shake when I first got here. I mean, just the number one thing is believe in yourself mother and her twin you know i've, I've been told kids, a million so times up in a two that i couldn't do something but like i don't know if i'm stubborn food, or just like money, you know no it's just ingrained in me to, you know not to, a lot to of things to me you know or my to prove people and wrong sister, my aunt, that I, 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 like so uh, that's just one thing you gotta do self-belief is probably it the kind of motivated one me in a different way to have like, in life. I, I didn't and want to go down that same road. Field, and then life changed. Whatever your, I moved to North Carolina. Activity I moved to a place with one, one stop uh, uh, I started driving, and, moving and theaters. Work. Uh, the biggest thing was Walmart. Moving you know, to North Carolina brought new beginnings for Bowman. But you still got to be selfish Including a new athletic passion. Growing up, I didn't play football. I played basketball and handball. You know, so when I first moved to North Carolina, in the I've, right I've seen way. football Don't before, but I've never seen it live in a person. I'm like, when you guys so dumb. Like, why are like, people just running you know, into each other? You know, at and, the end of the day, uh, if you're team high school, and I was like, I would never play football. So I tried out for the basketball team. Most of the time. I didn't make it. You know, and, and, and I tried and out for the baseball is, team, is, but I realized uh, I was scared of the ball. Probably one of the things I never did that again. So I tried out for football. The guy who kind of took me under my wing when I got there is Division II trust, like God. Trust in others, which is it's hard to do these days, you know. Being pretty good is an Everybody understatement. Bowman like leads the team in sacks this season. Or Since 2008, like I, I he's recorded at least 30 defensive like tackles like per everybody season, like somebody's proving he's one of the most whatever, dangerous defensive players in the league. So obviously you're this huge player on the more, field, but how do you get yeah, pumped yeah, up yeah, mean, What pumps so up John Bowman? Take to well, hear it's a process because I have stages conversations, of my But sometimes you just got to trust, you learn to trust people uh, and learn that people, sometimes to, uh, some people Cash, do have uh, your best at all. I mean, I wish everybody well. He has you know, some songs that are just, that just get you turned up. And you guys out there that want to pursue a professional anyway, career, and I, I just feel uh, good, and just, I listen to him, I sing it loud, yourself, and everybody's like, shut up, Bowman. You know, trust others, and, work hard, work diligently, and, and don't be af afraid to fail, that because failure is actually the motivation. That's what I, I find motivates me more than Would you have ever expected when you were a child that you would end up where you are now? Never, like, never, ever. To us, my profession. Across the world, uh, Canada this, was so across I, the know, world for us. I didn't I can, know about Canada until 2005, 2006. Players, so uh, that to say I, number, I've uh, exceeded uh, my uh, goals uh, of what I wanted to know, be as an have, athlete is an understatement. Like yourself, you know, I, I never thought in a million years I'd be able to take the time out of their day. 
just to to learn go French ahead now. and, and, and really <laughs> Can you speak a little? Help, uh, help me out in the sense of J-Sweet, getting on my Logan. channel, but at the same time, <laughs> hey, getting a little good. bit of your story out good. there that a lot of people no may not what see you or know, may not hear. They just see you on the field hitting the quarterback. Themselves. So With it kind of goes left both on ways, contract, but I definitely feel what you're saying. Has it's, uh, from it's being definitely a blessing to be a blessing. To his own backyard. what I'm saying. But, um, Listen. any, uh, any last words? Oh, 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 you know, and I don't get any more of my succeeding or my failing, so I'm not going to put a number on it. I'm just going to go out there and try to get as many as I can. Hey, I like that answer. I like that answer. Well, everybody, <laughs> well, everybody this is another episode of ENA We Got Time here with two times Great Cup champ John Bowman. Be on the lookout for him. Thank you again, man. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity again from the bottom of my heart. And we out. All right, man. Thanks for having me. No problem.